You know, there are several facets of this which I want to put, which your, your viewers will find interesting. Above all, this is a grave assault on federalism. You fight the elections. You spend obscene amounts of money. You lose the elections. And then you do all this to destabilize the elected government, a young government of a couple of years. Unfortunately, this political approach has been the hallmark of the ruling party at the center. The wrecks and ruins of constitutionalism are littered across the role of the governors in Kerala, in, uh, in, in, in Tamil Nadu, in West Bengal, in so many states in India. So what happens? Anybody comes and files a complaint. Anybody in the street I can set up. The cabinet of the state passes a detailed resolution with reasons. It's not just a piece of paper, not just a directive. The chief minister is no part of the decision making, doesn't even attend. That resolution of the cabinet is binding on the governor. It is sent to the governor weeks ago. Under our constitution for 75 years, the governor has no role, no power except a few accepted cases under the constitution, which don't arise here. Barring those exceptions, the governor is bound by the aid and advice. What does the governor do? A friendly governor, and I wouldn't even blame the governor. I would call it the HMV syndrome, his master's voice syndrome. The poor governor acts on this basis and sanctions, which is jurisdictionally flawed. Forget the merits, whether I did this or you did that. On the jurisdiction, he had no jurisdiction after being conveyed the advice of the uh, cabinet which is binding on him. And look at the consequences, politically wrong, morally wrong, completely anti-federalist. If you accept the principle that any friendly governor can give consent on anyone's complaint and the moment the complaint is filed, the, the CM must resign, then you tell me which elected government will be safe? You might as well end elections. Today, the role which the central government is playing qua and through the governors is deplorable. But if you start propounding the fact that the moment a sanction is granted, you start a campaign of removal, is that democratic or is it anti-democratic? Without examining the validity of the governor's sanction, if anybody should resign, it should be anybody else but not the chief minister. So, as I said, it is unfortunately... What happened to the office of the speaker under the 10th schedule is happening to the office of the governor. These are nothing but destabilizing the, uh, attempts by the government, by the ruling party, forming governments where you have lost, destabilizing governments where you have lost. It's the model which Karnataka has seen twice earlier. It's the model which Maharashtra has seen. It's the model which uh, Manipur has seen, Goa has seen, Madhya Pradesh has seen. The list is endless. So I condemn it with all the force at my command, legally, politically, morally.